just released version 1.1.0 of Godot Skeleton, my starter template for Godot projects. And in this video, I just want to talk about the changes and uh, what happened here. So if you use it, you can get a quick rundown on what's new. So if we go over to Godot, the first thing I want to show is the sound auto load <clears throat> kind of singleton that's available. So anywhere in your game, you can call sound.playSFX or sound.playMusic, and then it respects the global setting for your player as to whether or not to play that audio. So for example, here, if I turn sound effects on and go back to start, and I added a sound effect in the test project, or if I press P, you might have heard that blip. That was uh, a sound effect being played that way. <laughs> if I turn this off and then I go to start, and I pause again, it doesn't play the sound effect. So, you know, that's how that works. And um, that code, for example, here is an example where, um, let me find that, uh, that code. So I think it's in paused.gd. And here, when pause function is called, it just plays the sound effect and uh, you pass in the node from the scene where you could instantiate a new instance, however you want to go about that. But that's sound, and the same thing works with play music. So that's the first thing I wanted to share. Second thing is the debug UI. This is something I added in my Goto Types game. If you press the zero key now, you'll see up there debug UI enabled toggles. And what this does is it gives you a really easy way to add debug information to your scenes that, would, that you don't want in your final game. So here, I have it hidden, but if I toggle it on, you can see it there. And how that works is that there's a group, and all you do is add the debug underscore UI group to a node, and it will then be uh, only displayed if you toggle on the functionality in debug mode. And uh, it's set to toggle by default by pressing the zero key, and there's some debug logging to help made that clear. You'll want to make these hidden in your scene view. And uh, yeah, I want to make that a little better. So just in case you forget, it doesn't show up. But uh, yeah, you're going to go ahead and keep that hidden. And then pressing zero will toggle it. You may have also noticed that there's a version displayed up in the upper right. That's driven by the export config, which is a custom file in Godot Skeleton for uploading to itch and setting some metadata. So this sets the version of your game. And when you make new releases, you can increase this version. And then in the upper right, it displays that so that you and your players know what version they're playing. This can be helpful for bug reports or uh, just having confidence that the latest build is out there. So um, Godot doesn't really have a good project-wide way to do that. So that's why I added this. And this version is also used when you upload to itch. So they correlate with one another. Um, the renderer changed to compatibility mode. That's the kind of like lowest common denominator renderer, I think, and uh, has the widest support. And um, I figure best to start with the widest support. And then if you need to change it, you just click here and change it for your game. And you'll have the different renderer set. And uh, everything should just be compatible and not be a problem there. So that's that change. I made it so that all of the GD script code uses type signatures, or pretty much most of it, just because I've been using that for my own projects, and I think it's made my code better and adds clarity to like what's expected. So like set full screen, we know that val is a Boolean and not like a string or whatever. And then when we call set full screen in places, we know that we're expecting a Boolean. Um, so yeah, that happened. I renamed all the code to be snake case and all, this, all the scenes to be snake case. That's pretty much it. Uh, fleshed out the readme a little more. So uh, that's version 1.1 of Godot Skeleton. When I finish my next game, I'll take what I learn and put it into Godot Skeleton. And contributions are welcome too. You can also fork it and maintain your own template. And uh, you know, to use it, you just click use this template, create a new repository, or you just download the code as a zip here. Um, if you wanna see what it looks like yourself or play with it, you can run the tool. You can run Godot Skeleton and, uh, on the itch page. But that's it for 1.1. Uh, if it's useful, use it. Uh, if you're not into it, that's cool too. Uh, if you do use it for a game or something, let me know. That would make me feel good. All right. Thanks. Bye.